So let's go about that all important mirroring of the step so we get a left and a right step forward. And those will be the two building blocks that we need to get a cycling action going on for the walk. Now before we start, I'm going to do a really evil trick, which isn't 100% necessary, but I'm doing it right now so we can do this in a completely simple and, uh, I won't say brain dead, but in a way that we won't have to think too much about what we're doing as we're copying. And that is to key every single one of these channels on each of the key poses that I have made for the walk. So I'm going to key on available, so I and then select available and for all of the bones. I notice I selected them by hovering over the left side of the action window and hitting A once or twice until all the channels were selected. And what that does is just make sure that everything is keyed so when we go a paste mirrored we won't have any surprises at all. Um, it's, you actually won't get many surprises and so if you feel confident enough you don't need to do this step but this is just so that um, things go as smoothly as possible and it shouldn't really change anything about the walk since it just keep things in the positions that they were already in so the first thing we have to do is work with the first and last pose so we'll copy that first pose and then we'll paste it way at the end after the second cycle because the same foot will be forward at the beginning and the end. They'd be identical poses. So we had gone 12 frames forward in the beginning. We go another 12 frames forward to frame 25. And then now we just paste. Not paste mirrored, but paste. And once we do that, everything jumps backwards, unfortunately. It's not what we want. The character should be moving forward. And again, it's a matter of selecting those three bones like we did earlier and offsetting them so that the foot that's on the ground stays on the ground in that pose. So now let's have a look in the side view. We can put the cursor right under the bone just to sort of mark our position. And then we'll scrub forwards. That's the left. Use the left arrow, left mouse button, by the way, to drag the time slider forward and scrub forward on the action window timeline. And then we move that three bones forward with the G key, with the control key pressed down, so it's moving on integer steps, and we're done. And now we have a step and that simple slidey thing that we did before. The so a step skate. And notice I'm leaving the cursor in that position. So once I've marked down the position of that heel once, I can use it for references, for referencing uh, for each time I do this. So now we'll get the pass position over there. We'll go to the middle here and we'll paste mirrored this time. So just drag the time slider over and then paste mirrored. And you'll see how things jumped backwards. So let's select our three bones, our all important three bones. You can use box and deselect that extra bone that I picked. And once over, we'll drag it over the cursor. You notice it's moving by an offset of two each time. That's going to be a constant. And that's because that's the amount that the feet were offset from each other on that first pose. So if you remember that, that's also a trick and you can use numerical input for that. So this is starting to look really okay. We just have a few more, four more poses to copy and we're done. So once again, A key over the left side of the action editor, copy, and then we'll move to the equivalent frame and paste mirrored. And now we have to drag the three bones forward, so we'll select them. So, and then we'll go back to the side view and move them so that the heel is over the cursor. See that front heel should be over the cursor because that's the foot that's on the ground. So we'll just go, so we'll just make sure that the position is the same in both of those frames. We'll just grab it and with the control key pressed 
and we can middle mouse if you want to snap to one axis and click there and now we have that nice and easy now let's go back to the pose after that that extra pose we added while we were teaking select all the bones and then copy the pose to the buffer and now we'll go to the equivalent pose and we'll paste mirrored and now select our three bones the left and right feet and the torso go back to the side view this is getting very familiar by now isn't it and then and notice yeah that cursor is still a valuable guide that's always where that heel of that foot is going to be in each pose so with the control key press drag the bones forward and we're done with that now we just have to do those two poses in the other half of the cycle so we have to do the up and then that extra keyframe we added in the middle there so we select everything copy copy after we got the A key toggled and then we go to the equivalent frame paste mirrored by the way all these equivalent frames are a cycle ahead from the other one so it should be pretty easy to find them there I guess 12 frames ahead because we had a 12 frame cycle for our walk so you can visually see that in the action editor or you can just measure 12 frames ahead each time so let's go to the next one this is the last pose we're going to have to copy we'll copy it and we'll go 12 frames ahead paste mirrored and once again we have to select these three bones and make sure they're in the right spot yeah I think the zoom is important that you can see the grid when you're dragging things with the control key pressed and so that's another even offset and now we're actually done having our forward cycle in place just a little thing we can do is change the end frame of free end frame of the animation to frame 25 by going to that keyframe and hitting E in the timeline editor and now we have it